there guys, Mike here again. Thanks for clicking this video. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we're going to take a Milwaukee M12 die grinder and we're going to convert it to a half an inch by 18 band file. I've had this Milwaukee die grinder for about two years now and I love it. Milwaukee sure hit it out of the park with this type of tool. So a recent trip to Home Depot, I see that Milwaukee is now making an M12 band file. And I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I'd like something like that. Well, of course, it comes with a pretty hefty price tag as well. And I thought, well, maybe not. But I thought, hey, wait a second, I could probably adapt something to my die grinder. Let's just take a look here. Well, of course, it has a drum inside there and an arm assembly. And I think, hmm, I think I could do this. And here we are. I have all the parts laid out my bench here. It's all ready for final cleanup paint and final assembly. Part of the issue with this die grinder is that there's no real mounting surface to mount any type of attachment. So what I had to do is come up with an actual mounting plate. So you can see that it's recessed there and it fits snugly right in that little groove there. So put it on there and it fits. And on the back, I developed this little ring um, so you can actually place it over here so you can get at the speeds and that will sandwich in there and will hold it nice and tight. So the other issue is how do you actually mount a drum onto here? So what I ended up doing was making an actual adapter piece that slides in there and that is threaded. With this I have the drum which is half an inch wide and that sits right over top of here like that. And then we have a mounting screw that goes in like that. So that was whole part of the mounting system and the drum system. So now that we figured out how to mount everything, we had to do um, the actual extension rod. So this band here is half an inch wide by 18 inches around. So we had to do a rod that was long enough for that. And you can see I have a hole here and that slides in the back and forth. And to create enough tension, I have a spring in here that will be sandwiched in there and perfectly has enough tension to keep the belt in place. And then on the front of it, we have some sealed bearings here and it will run on the sealed bearings. It makes it nice and smooth. Now, if you're interested in these sealed bearings, I'll put a link in the description below and you can see what I actually use. And if you want to make something like this, you can go ahead and do that. So what's left now to do is do all the final cleanup, a paint and final assembly and give it a nice test. <laughs> Okay, everything's all painted here, ready for final assembly. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the drum adapter into there. We'll secure that. Mount the stanchions onto the plate here. So now we've got the plate and the stanchions on, we can mount it to here. I have the backing plate with some knurled nuts to allow us to do adjustments. So the neat thing about this is we can turn it like this to get different angles. So let's put the drum on now. Doesn't need much to tighten it, so the drum is on. Let's see if it runs straight. So now let's work on the arm here. Let's mount the bottom plate. Just two, six, by 32 by half inch long machine screws. Put the sealed bearings in here. So I made a little brass insert to go into the middle of these bearings. And some more machine screws. So these are six by 32 by half. And I had to just trim them just a little bit so they wouldn't meet in the middle. Now this thing is tapered up a little bit put the spring in and we'll slide this thing in. There we go. So what we want to do now is put these machine screws in. Now the reason why I use screws because this will allow us to do the tracking. So these screws here will help you to align everything just nicely. So once the tracking is set up you won't have to adjust it anymore. And we'll keep it a little loose so we can adjust the tracking afterwards, once the belt is on. 
So now it's time to install the belt. The front here, and just push that in. And there you go. And you can see that it's over to one side a little bit. Perfect. Okay, so let's cinch these down. So let's put the guard on. There you go. The one thing I like to mention that mine that I developed is a little bit different than the actual Milwaukee one is this bar in here. I can remove it and it'll allow me to do contours like this pipe. And now you can do... So that's handy for doing contour work rather than just flat pieces like this. Well, I think this band file turned out pretty awesome. I'm pretty impressed with it. Uh, to be honest with you guys, I really wasn't sure if this was going to turn out or not. And uh, as you can see, it turned out pretty good. Now you're probably wondering how much money do I have into this? Well, all the metal I had in my scrap bin, but if you had to source this metal out yourself, you're probably looking at about $15 worth of metal. I spent another $4 for all the stainless steel hardware and springs. And of course I bought a bag of four for the band files and this was $10. So for under $40, I saved myself a couple hundred dollars and all I have to do is invest some of my time. Now I have a full build document with pictures and plans to build this if you want to build something like this for yourself. And if you do, I'd like to hear how you make out. Please leave a comment below. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.